Good evening. Welcome to another edition of the Shadow Trader Video Weekly for Sunday, March 22nd, 2020. My name is Peter Reznicek from ShadowTrader.net. Balance to Excess, that's the title of this video. This video is going to be a little bit shorter, uh, at least shorter than last week. Last week, if you recall, I did a pretty long form video, gave you a whole lot of content. Uh, the reason this one's going to be a little bit shorter is because we're going to just stick to technicals, basically. Uh, when we're in the throes of a downtrend like this and news is coming at us very quickly, the news cycle is really driving everything as far as what's going on with shelter at home, quarantine, coronavirus, etc. Plus, we're going into a weekend. We don't know where futures are going to open up on Sunday, given new news flow. I'm just going to stick very simply to technical analysis, and I'm going to talk about a few basic concepts. One is going to be balance to excess. Two is going to be trend lines, and then we'll take a quick look also at Fibonacci uh, levels in the major averages as well. All right, without further ado, let's get into it. So let's take it back a little bit to last week's commentary where we discussed at length the dominant trend line in these majors, and we're starting with the S&P. And we can clearly see that now we have closed plenty of price action well below both trend lines, depending on how you draw them. And this is very, very... Uh, significant, I think, because remember, this is the uptrend that's been in place since the financial crisis 2009 lows. This is the rally that everybody talks about is so long in the tooth. And finally, it's it's starting to break. And we talked a lot about the 50% haircut, right? Remember, this is not a Fibonacci number. A lot of people emailed me and asked, you know, my Fib numbers are different. It is not a Fibonacci retracement from uh, the some low point, like from the 09 lows. It is a 50% haircut from the price of the all-time high, which is up here. Basically just taking this number here at the all-time high and cutting it in half gets you to this roughly 1,700 number. And I talked about that last week. Uh, if you recall, the title of the video was down 25%. Could we go 50? Well, now that we've broken trend, the odds are actually increased that we go 50. So we'll see if uh, over the next month or so, we can, you know, we take it down to another 50. It is certainly possible. All right. Continuing on, just looking at these trend lines, I just want to show you NDX. This is continuing to be interesting to me because of the relative strength where there is still so much space between here and the trend line. I do think we go there. As an advance heads up, I want to tell you that when this line hits, I will be a buyer of tech stocks very, very heavily. Okay, so watch that trend line. It's currently between 5,500 and 6,000. Obviously, as we get closer, you can get more granular and, and figure out exactly where it is, probably around 5,700 currently. Remember, this line will move up as time moves on the x-axis so by the time prices get there if they do that number will be a little bit higher but it is very important because it is the dominant trend line in the ndx also from the 2009 financial crisis lows and i do believe that is a buy those of you who follow my commentary follow my trades follow everything that i do in my advisories on the squawk box on twitter you should know that the number one tool in my toolbox is trend lines always has been always will be trend lines put together with market internals with context and market profile filling in all the rest of the blanks that is really how markets work i'm a firm believer that diagonal lines and horizontal lines for that matter across prior highs prior lows that is really all you need to be able to predict short-term moves in the market, all right? So NDX still well above the line, but I think going down to it. And Russell, as we talked about last week, broke trend far in advance of everything. And look how close the rut is now to the 50% haircut area, right? Taking this number here, cutting it in half, brings us down to about the low 800s, 833 and change. And look at how close we are. So literally small cap stocks are in danger of a 50% haircut from the highs potentially within one to two weeks if this trend was to continue. Okay, so now that we've looked at our monthlies, we wanna get a little bit more granular and we wanna take a look at trend lines on the daily. And these are really, really important, obviously, because they can tell us where trends change. And we can use that for uh, a long trade in this, in this case, or we use it as areas where we initiate new shorts. And the one thing that is very, very fascinating to me about th these particular trend lines that we're drawing right now, connecting the highs of this downtrend, is simply how steep they are. Generally, a trend line 
regardless of direction, is not even going to be as steep as this, which is the primary. Then it gets even steeper in the secondary and goes even lower. Now, as this has happened, notice that even with the secondary, there has been absolutely no counter trend activity, for instance, here, that was even able to break the secondary. I would have thought at the very least, you would have activity like this that would make it to the primary. It did not. Same thing here on Thursday. You had a little bit of a rally on Thursday before falling back, only made it to the secondary, but could not get itself up to the primary. And then same thing as well on Friday. Notice, right? A little bit of activity right to the secondary. So as this peels off, it's almost like the market is just falling straight down. There's a little bit of counter trend activity here and there in the green candles. That's obvious, but it's so little that it can't even break the steepest of trend lines. And that is noteworthy. And as we go forward in this market, it's very, very important, especially in this type of market, to keep these trend lines on your charts. Because think about it, you want to see new places where you could potentially initiate shorts. And also, those of you that are short already and holding short, you want to use these as basic guidelines as to where you would stay in your position or get out of your position. So in this current week, uh, there, even though there was some little bit of bounce action and, and earlier than that, we had you know, a couple of a little bit last week, there was really nothing happening here that changed trend at all. And anybody who was short essentially should uh, stay short, even with this activity uh, this week where you saw minor bounces. Remember, they only went to the secondary trend line. So what you may want to do as a longer term trader is continue to watch the primary trend line and just keep following this line down lower and lower and stay in shorts until you break that uh, primary trend line, basically. So just keep that in mind. The trend lines are a fantastic way to keep you basically on the right side of the trade at all times. Okay, now let's discuss this concept of balance, which I alluded to in the uh, introduction to the video. Basically, I said balance leads to excess and then excess leads to balance. That is actually a market profile uh, theory. Uh, it is reality. It's more than just theory, but uh, usually uh, put forward by James Dalton, who is my mentor in the market profile. Uh, his work is amazing. You should definitely uh, check him out if you can. And Jim always said that balance leads to excess and excess leads to balance. And what is that? Well, a balancing market is simply one that is trading within a large range and the prices are sort of ping-ponging back between highs and lows and staying within that range. Sometimes we call that a responsive market as well as opposed to an initiative market. An initiative market is one that has new money coming into it where traders are initiating new trades looking for a start of a new trend. A responsive market is where shorter term traders are responding to highs and lows by selling highs and buying lows because they don't think that the market's going to move out of that range. So they have a very short term time frame outlook and they're just looking for smaller profits as they move against levels to the upside and against levels to the downside. So uh, this balance cannot obviously last forever. And that's why uh, Jim always says balance leads to excess, meaning that you stay in the balance area for a while and then you break out and you have excess. You have a larger move outside of the balance. And that's what I wanted to point out to everybody uh, today. This is like three to five days, depending on how you look on it. Really, the meat of the balance area was about three days. And I call it balance because notice that these highs and lows are pretty close to each other and you have a lot of the range confined uh, within at least the at least the Wednesday, Thursday, Friday activity, more or less in the same range. Notice that uh, Wednesday's activity was this big candle here that had the tail, and Thursday's activity is completely inside of that, and Friday's activity also is inside of that. Right, So this is the balance area and balance leads to excess. So we would expect that the next move is going to be a break out of this balance area, which obviously is below this low. And as I was saying again in the uh, video, it should be lower, right? We have to assume that since there hasn't been barely any counter trend activity thus far, we should assume that the market is probably going to do the same thing. Now, if it doesn't, that's fine too, but we just have to be remembered that we have that this balance area is here and we can't be afraid to buy it, at least for a trade. Because remember, the reason that balance leads to excess is simply because balance represents an area of basically traders that are fighting over price, where you have 
a very split number of traders who either believe it's long going forward or who believe it's short going forward and the balance turns into excess because the 50% who are wrong have to reverse themselves and then you also get new traders who are initiating activity because they like that risk reward of moving out of a balance area, right? Whenever you're in a tight range, you have excellent risk reward breaking out of that range because you know where your stop is. One of the things that uh, Jim also taught me over the years is, is he said that from his experience, he was on trading floors and, and running trading desks, et cetera. He noted that larger traders like to initiate big positions whenever there was uh, some sort of consolidation or balance or up against these key areas because they knew that their risk reward was very good. So I think a lot of traders look at balance areas and you definitely get this piling on effect as these balance areas break and you see big movement on either side. So keep that in mind as you navigate this, this coming week, that this balance, at least of these three days of Wednesday, Thursday, Friday is here. And as if and when we move out of this balance, again, I do think it's to the downside, but we shall see, the move should be pretty explosive. Okay, lastly, I want to talk just a little bit about Fibonacci. Now, because this move is so large and we haven't bounced yet at all, Fibonacci levels don't really have that much import, but remember, they will at some point, and I'm kind of giving this to you now as an advance heads up, because when this market bounces, and at some point it certainly will, if the bounce is a real counter trend bounce, meaning that it's gonna last more than a day and it's gonna bring in a lot of short covering and maybe even some new money buyers, perhaps at that NDX trend line I talked about, that to me would be an area where there will be probably be uh, initiative trade, right? There's gonna be new money buyers buying that trend line and it'll last a while. The question is always gonna be how far will it go? And then is there potentially another short, which there usually is, usually when you have a very, very large move, it's not gonna be just one low and keep going. You'll at least have some sort of a rollover and you wanna know where that's gonna be. And that's usually gonna be at a Fibonacci level. So I'm a huge believer in the 50 and the 61.8. You can see that I've turned off all of the other levels because I just like to focus on those. And again, this is more of an advanced heads up. We're nowhere near even a 50% retracement of this move thus far. But as things continue lower, keep starting from up here, turn on your Fibonacci tool and keep pulling it down to the new lows and keep that on with your trend lines so that you know where your uh, potential bounce areas could be, where there could be targets if and when this market sets up for a long move. And that's all for this week. Thank you, as always, for spending a little bit of your weekend with me. So remember all the technical things that I talked about in the video as you navigate the markets next week. Obviously, the downtrend is very, very steep. Thus far, however, there has been very little counter trend activity, resulting in just this five-day balance area at the bottom, correct? and yet very little short covering at all. So we would assume at this point that the balance leading to excess would lead to excess to the downside. So we'll be looking out for that. But of course, here at Shadow Trader, always preparing ourselves for any outcome that uh, may happen. Beyond that, stay safe out there. Follow all the rules. I'm going to be working from home all next week. Our office is officially shut down as of midnight Saturday, as I imagine many of your workplaces are. And if so, if you are working from home, I have something cool that you may want to check out next week. I got an email recently from Terry uh, Lieberman, uh, who runs Window Trader. Window Trader is the company that provides the beautiful and very elegant market profile charts that you see me use in these videos. And also they are snapshotted every morning in my Peter's Pre-Market Perspective market profile newsletter. And Terry invited me to do a webinar with him basically next week. It's going to be Wednesday, March 25th at 4.30 p.m. Eastern. What I wanted to share with you right here is Terry uh, sent me a number of questions and topics in advance that he wanted to talk about. And I thought given the current environment, I really like the stuff he sent over. Uh, this is probably going to be of interest to many of you. Uh, he said, uh, the topics are going to be based on current market activity. And I'd like to ask you questions like, you've traded for a number of years. Please tell us what you think about the current market activity compared to the sell-off in 2008. And in what ways is it different? Next, uh, has your trading changed over the past few weeks? And if so, are you comfortable in sharing how you're currently trading? I certainly am comfortable with that, and I definitely will be talking about that. For those of us that don't have your trading background and experience, what would you generally suggest to those who want to actively trade in this particular market? What did you think about last week's uh, 
basis point rate cut by the FOMC, do you think it will have any foreseeable impact on the market based on the fact that the market sold off after the announcement? And last but not least, uh, there are a lot of comments about the value of market profile in trading markets that are behaving the way that these currently are. What are your thoughts on that? And what is your general sense about the markets going forward? So those are the topics and questions that uh, Terry and I are going to be discussing in our webinar. Again, that's Wednesday, March 25th, 4.30 p.m. Eastern. If you'd like to attend, all you have to do is make sure to be on our email list, okay? Right here, shadowtrader.net at the bottom on the homepage, sign up. You just have to put your first name and email, no other questions uh, necessary, and I will be sure to send out an email to everybody on Tuesday inviting you uh, to this webinar with Terry Lieberman from Window Trader. On behalf of myself and the entire Shadow Trader team here in beautiful Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, I wish you good trading and good night.